What's up? This is Ryan. And I'm Andrew. And we are from the band Group Love. And you are live in limbo. couple lovely members of the band group love um so to get us started off for those who haven't had the pleasure of listening what can you tell us about the new album big mess big mess is uh a crazy hodgepodge of um songs that came together in basically out of a big mess Uh, that was our lives after six years straight of touring um we finally took our first break last year and our singers Hannah and Christian had a baby and uh in the meantime the rest of us we just all kind of tried to figure out like what to do not on the road anymore and I think from that confusion and um kind of just messy realization that we hadn't lived normal lives for a while uh came this inspiration for the album and it's really um a crazy collaboration of a lot of I think a lot of songs and a lot of parts of songs that you wouldn't necessarily think should work together and the way they came together is what's really special to us about this album so I think we feel really more proud of of this than of the the two previous albums which is how it should be obviously you should be putting out your best work every time yeah. and uh yeah it's 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 really eclectic and I think it it really has um a little bit of of everything in there for everybody so we're super proud of it and hope you come to a show and listen to it and there you go that's my spiel so how much do you think that idea of having that kind of normal time mm-hmm. that idea of normalcy after touring for so long and after being in that environment for so long impacted this album and made it that much different than the ones that preceded it I think we had a moment to to reflect on how we approached the music in the first place. I mean, we've always been a very collaborative band. We've done everything in-house. Hannah does all of our artwork. I I had done all of our uh, production and recording, and and we obviously all write everything together. Um, And I think this time, one of the major things was we decided to um, push ourselves a little bit, and for the first time, we tried working with an outside producer. Okay. So about, I think there's a... Uh, about half the songs on the album are from these sessions we did in Seattle with this uh, producer named Phil Eck. Um, and we did that part of the album first. And I think that was a nice challenge for us to, to work with someone outside of the group. And also we learned a lot from the experience of seeing how other people approach, you know, our songs. And then we kind of took those lessons and went back to LA and kind of revisited the approach that we know so well from from the first two albums but i think we were just more mature writers at that time so i think that's another kind of coming together of two sides of you know of an approach that really has somehow worked even though it shouldn't work yeah so i think that that's one of the major effects of of the time off was having the courage to like go outside our our boundaries a little bit definitely so you talk about being a really collaborative band um, obviously, we've all been together for a while now. Uh, how do you find that group dynamic, how you collaborate and how you interact, has changed since that first DP? I mean, I think we're more sure of like who we are as writers, as friends. Um, that doesn't mean we don't fight. You know, there were moments in the studio that were tense, and people got upset, and people stormed out, and especially when Andrew takes his shoes off. I, I can't deal with that. Oh, man. Yeah, you just like, keep I, your shoes on, man. Yeah, I, I have a propensity for being barefoot. No, but uh, so I don't know. You know, I, it's easy to sit and say every moment was easy and, and it was just a, a dream. And it was in so many ways, but in so many ways it wasn't. And I think that's what makes it a really passionate record and gives it a lot of depth is that there was Struggling. a lot of, yeah, feeling behind it and people cared a lot. And it was, there was a lot of great songs and it had, and you know, and. <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> Background music. It's good. Fucking a. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what it was like in, in the studio. So yeah, it was special. Fair enough. I wouldn't take back any of those those heated moments for anything. It's all meant to be. For you know, it's all happened for a reason. That's how you want it to be. Yeah. Um, if in this moment 
um, you had to say one song off the new album that isn't necessarily your favorite, but it's just, you know, you're listening to a lot or impacts you in some way. What would that be and why for both of you? For me, this may be cliche because it's like the current single, but Welcome to Your Life was has always been a really special one because it's really representative of kind of what I was saying before that it sort of encompasses the approach to the album as a whole. It's three different parts of a song from three different members of the band that kind of came together and shouldn't have worked but ended up working perfectly and and I think the theme is really special. It touches a little bit on bringing a new life into the band, you know, Hannah and Christian's baby is basically a new band member. Uh, It touches on innocence and where we are as a society and and you know how to make the best of this really fucked up world um especially coming into it as you know a newborn and coming from that fresh perspective and i think in that same way having that new member in the band has also made our lives just day to day better and that that's why that song really touches me um and what about you um there's a couple i mean one of them uh I mean, all of us feel this way, but Enlighten Me is the song's track four. Uh, it's the first thing that we played, uh, that Christian played, um, any of us, after kind of n- none of us sharing any music with each other for a long time. And we, we had like a rehearsal, and he took us, I don't know what show we were doing, and he took us outside, and he's like, I want to play you guys something. And we sat in his car, and he played a demo, and I think it was sort of was the catalyst for really making this record. Like, I wasn't sure if we were going to make another record, honestly. Like, I didn't know. If people were kind of off, and doing living a, yeah. a normal life again which yeah. was totally ex- expected and the right thing to do given we'd been together for six years yeah we, we, we oh, i remember right. that moment as well we just all kind of sat and we said wow oh, okay well, that's amazing it's yeah. time to get back into it um yeah that's a good one that was a good moment and then for me personally um there's a song called cannonball it's track seven um and it's the first time i've sung lead on a song since the first record so oh, wow so that was like a cool one um and it was cool to see like for me, the transformation of like a demo that I was like so sure of being like the right approach to see where it went as a band, it was really cool to like watch it transform. That song is literally like a, a quarter rave music, a quarter heavy metal, and a quarter like group love indie <laughs> rock. It's yeah. it's the craziest song. I but love when that it. works, it works. Right? Exactly, it's works, a it fucking mess, but it works great. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Um, so you talk about um, Welcome to Your Life, and that is kind of the single of the moment uh, yeah. for the album. Um, and I mean, obviously, a lot of people know you from your 2011 single, Tongue Tied. Mm-hmm. When you are writing a record, how much thought do you put into, oh, this sounds like a single, and like, oh, this is going to be that song? Like, do you put any thought into that? Does that factor? No, we don't talk about it like that. I mean, when we were, ch- we always, you know, we probably recorded, well, there's probably like 40 songs written or so for the album. We probably recorded um, 20. 20 yeah. And then from those from those 20, you then pick, you know, the 10, 11 songs on the album. And I think it's never um, it's never really a single based thing. I think it's just what are our collectively our favorite songs. And we honestly just like do the mark. Everybody do the marks of, you know, everyone's like top 10 and you put them in priority. And like generally we all kind of meet up in the same place. And and that's the beauty about this band. It's, It's that collaboration that makes the music and makes the album and the choices on the album and then once that's decided then you know a bunch of other factors go into it but we never think about that when we're making the music yeah for sure um so you obviously from your ep to now as with all bands you evolve when you grow to have a fan following um and i'd say that yours is a pretty large fan following people know who group love is how much if at all does that play into it when you make a record is it you know will the fans like this is it a pressure thing or is that something you kind of try to step away from go ahead i totally zoned out because i heard dilly dally just ripping (laughs) uh screaming uh, the opener is killing it what was it Ryan? go ahead (laughs) um no yeah we have we are lucky to have (laughs) asking about the fan influence yeah the fan base fan influence influence. oh i mean i think the fans definitely influence i think um what we bring to our live shows. I think when we make the music, we're making it for each other Um, and choosing the album tracks. Like it's, it's really just based on what our personal interests are and our personal um, taste. I think Um, with the fans, we always want to put on a show that we think is pushing the boundaries for us and them and and something that they're going to come to because a lot of the fans that are coming to our shows, it's probably, 
I don't know what the, the breakdown is percentage wise, but you know, there's a lot of them that have probably been to 10 group love shows at this point, And we want to give them something new every time and also push ourselves and challenge ourselves. So they definitely influence how the show looks, what we put into the production, how we order the set list, what, you know, how we choose it, that kind of thing. It's a big part of it. We want to make them happy. I mean, honestly, it means the world to us that people care about what we do and having people like today we got off the bus in Toronto and there's kids already outside at 10 in the morning and I can't, I literally can't believe it. It blows and my mind. For two LA and kids, I, it's, the, I mean, it's this so is not humbling. cold for you, but it's freezing for yeah, us. It's freezing yeah. and they're out there in a sweatshirt and like ripped jeans and I'm like, oh my God, I literally was like, hey, doors aren't until seven, like you can go home. <laughs> yeah. You can probably come back at five and be right where you are. And they're like, no, 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 we're waiting. And I'm just like it's literally crazy. saying this because I'm truly humbled by those kids like that care and know all of our songs and all that. And like we always try to go out and meet them and hang out with them, you know, as much as we can. And because on, literally we have nothing without those people. Yeah, like, it's, all, it's all a big family. We have the family. songs, we have each other, but we don't have our li the livelihood and the, what we get to do every day and travel the world. And it's it's special and it means a lot to everyone who, who cares about what we do. So. Sure, and I'm sure yeah. fans appreciate that very much and that thought you put into the music. Um, I guess my last question would be, so you talk about kind of Welcome to Your Life, and I think the album in general, it has a lot of hope in it. Um, and I think that's kind of, well, you're known for that. You know, you make these kind of happy, energetic songs, but not necessarily like not surface level happy, but there is hope to them. Um, how do you go about that when you know, shit isn't so great when, you know, especially right now, things are messy, things yeah. are things yeah. are hard, but you still manage to put this hope into your music. How, how do you do that? I, I think our singer Hannah puts it best she, because she kind of hit the nail on the head because we always felt that way. Like, yeah, our, our songs do come out hopeful and in some way, sometimes upbeat and, and sometimes happy, um, but they don't start like that. And I think what it what it boils down to is the different components that go into a song that are are coming from the band members individually are not always as hopeful but whenever we get together and bring stuff together it's that group dynamic and that collaboration that really i think brings out the hope because it's you know it's indescribable what what that feeling is to work with four people that you don't really necessarily have the same taste in music you know it's 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 a funny thing this band like we're all very different musically and what we like and what we listen to and and i think there's something about that collaboration that brings hope into everything that we write um and you have to be hopeful because even when shit's totally fucked around you and in our country especially like you just gotta kind of band together and and friends are so important and family and this is a family and and what we do together i think just naturally becomes hopeful like that can't well, say anything better than that <laughs> put it very well yeah. i am killing these You're answers killing them Ugh. you are killing them well thank you so much for sitting down with me and please listen to group love's new album big mess and try to come see them live because i'm very excited Definitely. for the show try not do that's a Star Wars line. I'm a nerd. Sorry. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, thanks again. So from Live in Limbo, this is Rachel Gordon signing out.